Hello everyone, Frozen Foxy here, and I am uh, bringing you a quick tutorial here. And the reason that I am doing that is because, one, I had made a tutorial in the past that wasn't so great, and I'm going to basically redo that, and two, because um, I've been getting a lot of people asking me about how I record, um, what I do, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go over that. This is a uh, PC-only tutorial right now. I am not going to be uh, talking about how to record from consoles. Um, so basically the first thing that you need to get is going to be uh, this Fraps right here. Um, Fraps is a program that allows you to record uh, video games on your computer and other programs um, from your computer. However, we're focusing on video games obviously. Um, the main tab that's going to matter for you here is going to be this movies tab. Uh, sometimes this FPS tab will be something that does matter. Um, like in a game that I'm recording right now, which is called Arcanum, uh, it does matter. And the reason that it matters is because when I start recording Arcanum, I'll actually see the FPS get recorded along with uh, the video game footage, which I do not want to see the FPS recorded in there. So what I end up having to do is use this overlay hotkey, which is denoted here, um, to basically turn off the FPS gauge after I have already started recording and uh, then I have to reload the game and it makes it disappear. Um, the reason that I actually have to have the FPS visible is because it will turn red um, when the game starts recording. Anyway, let's go back to this movies tab here and we'll go over what we've got going on here. The first thing that you're going to see um, up near the top is going to be the folder to save movies in. Currently it's denoted to uh, Arcanum because that is what I'm recording right now. Um, basically you can use this change button to set it to anywhere on your computer. I highly recommend putting it somewhere that uh, has plenty of space because movies are going to be huge from Fraps. They are basically raw movies. Um, so basically you can get anywhere from uh, two to five minutes that's going to have about a 3.9 gigabyte size so if you don't have enough space to uh, to basically handle that you're going to easily screw up your hard drive because you've already filled it up all that kind of stuff I've actually got um, two 1.5 terabyte drives in the background just so that I can record videos onto those um, but once you have finished uh, recording um, you can basically use this view button to open the folder where it has recorded to. Now the next thing that you'll notice is this hotkey here. I've got it set to a semicolon and the reason I've got it set to that is because that is um, one thing that most games don't use. Um, by default it should be set to F10 and a lot of games actually use F10 for various things like auto save, menus, all that kind of stuff. So I like to change it to this particular hotkey. In some cases you will find games that do uh, actually use this key. So work around it, find a key that the game does not use, and then you can uh, change it to that. All you really have to do is uh, basically click on it and that will highlight it and uh, then you can basically push a key anywhere on your keyboard to change the uh, the capture key and um, when you hit it once it starts to record when you hit it again it will stop the recording um, next we're gonna see these uh, video capture settings down here I've got mine set to 30 FPS um, or 30 frames per second and um, that is what you want to use for most games. Some games will actually require that you uh, use something higher. Like uh, when I was doing my Arma 2 Let's Play, um, that required me to set it up to 60. Because basically the way that Arma 2 works is it will um, hit down the frame rate every once in a while. And if you have it on 30 FPS, then you're going to be smashing the frame rate down to like 10 FPS, and everything looks very, very laggy. So I actually had to move that up to 60 FPS for that. Um, for Bard's Tale that I did a long time ago, I actually had to turn that up to 100 FPS, which is uh, what you see in this custom FPS box right here. Um, it really all depends on the game. Most games will be fine with 30 FPS. This is something that you're going to have to figure out on your own because I can't tell you um, 
just based on whatever you're going to record which one you should be using um, it's kind of trial and error just check it out see if it lags if it does just re-record it in a different FPS and keep going until you find um, a good FPS the one thing that you do have to remember is once you have found an FPS that does work for that game you will need to record in that FPS from that point on um, because if you change it you cannot actually uh, compile those videos together in the way that I use um, so that could be a big problem if you don't remember to put it on the correct FPS for the game that you're using which is why I always like to default to 30 FPS make sure that everything is is good across the board um, next we got this uh, full and half size here half size is actually going to take whatever the uh, resolution setting is and half it in the uh, final video um, so if you have the uh, the 1280 720 then you're going to go to half of that um, which is not what you really want to do um, if you want to just straight uh, compile the videos and not have to worry about anything with the resolution size because what you're going to have to do in the end is upscale the video once again um, if you can do it in full size great however keep in mind that there are a lot of computers out there that do not have the capability to handle full size and that's why that half size setting is there just in case you need it um, I'm not going to be talking about upscaling during this tutorial I'm just going to be talking about this as if you're using uh, the full size setting here. Um, lock frame rate down here will actually lock it at uh, the 30 FPS or whatever you have selected um, and try to keep it there. Now that doesn't mean that it can't uh, go below that 30 FPS, it just means it can't go above that. If you don't lock the frame rate, it can actually go above that, which is completely fine because the final video will still be in uh, 30 FPS instead of being variable like uh, when you're playing the video game however because you allowed it to be variable during the video game that can prevent uh, a lot of lag spikes during your video recording very good thing to have unchecked um, next we're gonna see these sound capture settings over here you're gonna notice this record win 7 sound which may not look familiar to you if you've been using fraps on uh, Windows XP or Windows Vista that's because this is only available on Windows 7 um, the reason that this is available on Windows 7 I don't know. It's just a, a Fraps feature that they uh, introduced in Windows 7. I guess Microsoft put in something in uh, Windows 7 that allowed them to mix channels. Not sure. Anyways, um, if we've got this record Windows 7 sound on, that's going to allow us to get the uh, video game sound. Um, next, we've got the record external input sitting right here, and that's going to be for your like your microphone and so forth, um, so that you can record both of those together. Currently, the microphone that I've got um, that I'm using is a Sennheiser PC350. Um, I've switched to this from my other microphones, um, other headsets. Uh, and it seems to work a whole lot better than my other ones however it is a fairly expensive headset so keep that in mind if you want to go ahead and buy this I think it was somewhere around the uh, $135 range something like that anyway um, then we've got multi-channel and stereo over here you're gonna want to select multi-channel so that you can get uh, audio from both channels recorded and that means that we'll get both the game sound and we'll get the uh, microphone sound at the same time so that we can do commentary during the game and we don't have to remix the audio later. Um, honestly, I like doing it that way so that everything is all mixed together um, before I ever have to worry about it. And uh, finally, we've got um, these checkboxes down here that are uh, don't sync audio and video. Don't check that. You're going to get some desync um, on the audio and video. You want that to happen. It's a little more intensive to have it unchecked, but um, if you don't want to be moving your audio around in a different program, then um, it's good to leave that uh, unchecked here. Um, next is the hide mouse cursor in the video. Don't want to do that because most games you want to let people know where your mouse cursor is. Finally, we've got uh, Force Lossless RGB Capture. Um, this will actually make your files a lot bigger in most cases and also make uh, the recording a lot slower um, so you can get performance dips when you're actually recording the game um, 
If you are uh, working with uh, Windows XP or uh, Windows Vista, that means you're not going to have this capability to mix the audio like I am here. Um, in that case, you need to have a sound card that has the capability to uh, use a setting called What You Hear or Stereo Mix. Um, what that allows you to do is actually mix the uh, video game sound and your uh, commentary straight through the, uh, the card itself. Um, now the card I'm using actually does have that capability because um, uh, back in the day I was actually using this on a uh, Windows XP box. Um, so basically you'll see this what you hear here. Um, and that is for creative sound cards only. Um, a lot of other sound cards have stereo mix instead of what you hear. Um, mine is a creative uh, Sound Blaster X-Fi uh, Extreme. Um, I recommend it. It works pretty well for me. I think it's going for about uh, $59 or so in the US. Um, that to me is a pretty good price for a sound card. I don't know if it is for you or not, but it is definitely for me. Um, and I, I've heard some people have had trouble getting it to work on Windows Vista and uh, Windows 7. However, I haven't had problems. As you can see, it's working just fine here. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, hit the game back here. So we've got Dead Space 2 sitting in the background. We're just uh, looking at the menu and you might see this uh, this yellow FPS sitting up in the corner here. That means that we're currently not recording. Um, once we do start recording, we actually will start to see uh, this turn red. So if I hit the, uh, the hotkey here, we've got it turned red, which means we've started recording. Now if I hit it again, it's back to yellow. That means we've stopped recording. Um, something interesting that uh, has nothing to do with the tutorial is there's actually a couple of Easter eggs on this menu. I don't know if this is after, um, after you've beat the game or not, but you'll notice that the marker is full here. And you also notice that we've got some alien writing in the corners here, and that's that's the only alien writing that I've found um, in this. I just thought I would point that out, but um, some random Easter eggs. I'm not going to translate it. Anyway, that is um, our first part of this tutorial, basically just covering fraps and recording from the game. In our next part of the tutorial, we will be looking into uh, how to record using. Uh, or uh, how to compile the video using virtual dub. So I will see you in part two.